Amen. Glad he's in the house of the Lord this morning. We've come to magnify Jesus and give him praise. He's worthy of that. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've been thinking about if you were here on Wednesday night, Brother Dixon taught a Bible lesson about prayer. Amen. And it's it's where we get our strength Amen. as Christians. It's how we communicate with the Lord. It's a vital part of having a relationship with Jesus. As a matter of fact, he mentioned it in Luke chapter number 11. It's a very common setting of scripture because it's known worldwide as the, you know, the, the prayer, the Lord's Prayer, sorry. And what I was thinking about in that is the disciples asked the Lord to teach them to pray. And in that scripture, the very first words that Jesus responded to them, he said, when you pray. And then he went on to give the example of how to do that. But it was not a question of if we should pray. Right. Amen. It was just an understood. Jesus spoke to them and said, when you pray. Amen. So it's not an option if you're a Christian, if, if we're going to pray or if we're not. Amen. If you're going to be successful, it's going to be because you have a prayer life. Amen. And I'm saying all that to say this. We're going to start this service with prayer this morning. All right. Amen. And I know that we have several people that we need to pray for, people that aren't able to be here. Amen. You know people that are sick and need a touch of the Lord. Amen. And we usually take those prayer requests and it's well and good as you do that. But I want us to do something just a little bit different this morning. Amen. A lot of times what we do, and it's, nothing's wrong with this, but what I find is that we get in a habit of doing things. We take a prayer request and we pray, and it seems like a lot of times my voice is the only one you hear because I'm in a microphone. But we're going to do this different this morning. What I want you to do, if you have those prayer requests and you know the people that need the touch of God, amen, and I want you to step out in faith this morning, and I want us to make our way to the front of the church, amen, and we, we pray. We're going to call those names to the Lord. Amen. Those petitions and those needs. And we're just going to spend a minute or two here in prayer. Amen. Asking God to move in our community, to move in our church and in our families. We have lost children, lost loved ones that need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we need God to begin to draw them. And the only way that we can do that is express that to Him through prayer. Amen. So if you would, amen, they're just going to play softly. I want us to come around the front if you would. I know it's different, amen, but sometimes we need to do things a little bit different if we want different results. We talked about praying in the Spirit. The only way that you get in the Spirit is you have to pray, and you have to push beyond what's normal, amen, and you need to step out of your comfort zone a little bit. It's out of my comfort zone a little bit too, amen, but we know how to get a hold of God, and that's what we're going to do. If you want to kneel and pray, that's fine. If you want to lift your hands and pray, amen, whatever you want to do, ever how you want to get a hold of the Lord, let's just spend a few minutes here talking to the Lord, amen.
God comes by and does something special like this. I mean, what kind of miracle is right. this that he read? And what kind of a uh, honor is that for God to give our church? We consider ourselves a small work, but it is huge, huge. Right. That is a faithful servant of the Lord, and he always comes through for us. I read Brother Dixon's notes about last Sunday when he preached, and he said it was not a maybe. It didn't say maybe in the Bible. It said it will be done. Right. And that's how he is every day in my life and all of us. Yes. He just takes such good care of us, like Sister Betty said. He knows where we're at. Right. He knows every hair on our head. And he knows everything, our, our desires. And he said if we commit ourselves unto him, he would give us a desire of our heart. Right. And since I have been serving the Lord, I started out when I was about 21. I have never anything that God did not give me or he's still working on that because that's his word. He didn't say I might. He said I will. Right. And he has. And I've standing here for 50 years as a testimony Hallelujah. to let you know that God is exactly that in my life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. into what we've been anticipating for a long time. Amen. It's time for harvest. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all of my heart. Amen. I appreciate Sister Conrad and Conrad's Brother Conrad also what they've been doing around here. Yes. Amen. I know that a lot of people have had their hands involved. Amen. I got a call from Sister Conrad. I was on my way to work. It was about 7.15 <laughs> this week. Amen. And she said, Brother Jamie, she said, we have this metal tin that's been laying out here by this building for a long time. And I understand that you can get that moved. And she said, we need to have that gone before Sunday morning. Amen. And I appreciate that. Because sometimes we know things need to be done, but she has taken charge. Amen. And she's got some people involved to do some work. But what she told me that I loved most is she said, we've been in construction for a long time. But she said, construction is over. And we need to clean this place up and we need to move on. Amen. And I believe that. Amen. Our preparation for revival is done. Amen. It's time to enter into it. Amen. And I believe that with all of my heart. Brother Rick, would you stand and testify for us?
They've been pushed back. They've been thrown down. And you can feel, you can feel the resentment that is growing in the United States of America being told how to get back in a corner and keep your mouth shut. Oh, don't push me too far. I get louder and louder when I hear somebody tell me, get in the corner right. and shut up. Right. Bartimaeus, shut up. You're erupting our beautiful parade right. that's going by here. And look who's leading it, the Lord himself. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Right. Hey, stop the parade. Right. It's time for the church to get loud and to get proficient in the worship and the praise of God. Right. If we don't do it, somebody else is going to rise up and say, just leave your crown for a second. I'll take it and I'll go with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's time to move forward in revival. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brindley, would you mind coming and taking up the offering for us? Amen. He hasn't been here for a few services, and we had not took up the offering. We were waiting until the end. We were waiting on Brindley to come back. Amen. He is here, and we're going to take up our Sunday tithe and offering. Let's all pray together. Jesus, we love you. Thank you for all that you've done for us, God, for every blessing, Jesus, every good gift, Lord. We pray that you would bless this offering this morning for its intended purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. He's an old time God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is.
some pictures started running through my mind. And for those of you that have been here, hey, amen, that remember us having church in the old jail in Prairie Grove. Hey, amen, we had church in senior centers in Farmington and Prairie Grove. We had church about anywhere we could find to have church. Hey, amen, before we got in this building. Hey, amen, then in this building, I can remember when there was nothing but metal beads and then yeah. there were some studded walls and over time there was some sheetrock and then some paint. Amen. And then there was some carpet. Amen. We built this uh, platform. Amen. And now the foyer is finished. Amen. God has his own time and sometimes it's frustrating for us, people like myself who like things done right now. Amen. But there's a purpose and there's a reason and his timing is much better than mine. Amen. He knows exactly what we have need of and when we need it. Amen. Right. And he's provided that. And I just have a feeling in my soul. Yes. Amen. Like Sister Conrad said, construction is over. Amen. And we're about to move into revival. And I'm excited about that this morning. Praise God. Amen. I want my wife to come and say it one more time. Praise the Lord before Brother Dixon. Praise the Lord. Praise God has been so good to me. I love him so much. I've been um, thinking a lot this week about um, the blood of Jesus. You know, it's funny how at different times, different things have come into your mind. But um, this week for me, it's been about the blood of Jesus. And um, I I know that you all know these things. But, you know, um, just as, as, as humans, um, blood is very sticky. It's very hard to get off. It's um, it, When it dries, it, it's really tough. And yet... Even when you do get it off, there's still, you know, germs or whatever, your DNA, all those things are still kind of there unless it's been thoroughly, thoroughly disinfected. But I just, when I think about that and I think about how his blood just flows from Calvary, like it's just like a, just a river that flows, it just, it overwhelms me sometimes. I know when we talk about wading into the water, I know that this is two separate things, but sometimes when we talk about that wading in the water, they wade into their ankles and into their knees to, you know, out into the river. Um, I sometimes think about, like, when I go back to the cross, and I think about just getting closer and closer and closer, and that blood just flowing over my heart and over my sins and over my life. It's amazing what God has done for us. Yes. And, and we can't say enough that the sacrifice that he made at Calvary, just for me, like, if I would have been the only one, he would have done that. If you would have been the only one, he would have done that, no matter... The mistakes, no matter how many times we've fallen and failed him, every time he is so faithful to forgive and to have that blood. Yes. What show for me and what show for you again? It's not cathedrals, it's not steeples, it's not crosses made of gold, it's not just sentimental stories that have been passed down through all. It's not religion or tradition that can save the soul of man. It took the single blood of one holy lamb. It's all about the blood. It's all.
talking about getting this church <coughs> construction completed and everything. It's just to have a place to invite people to come. Yes. The purpose of it all is to get somebody in contact with Jesus Christ. Amen. Because it is just one drop of His blood. Yes. Amen. Can cover all sin stains. Amen. Yes. Can wipe out every mistake He's ever made. Amen. That's just the kind of God He is. Amen. Yes. And the purpose of the church, amen, is to just be a conduit to get people in contact with Jesus. Amen. So don't forget the purpose. Amen. Let's talk to the Lord as Brother Nixon comes. Jesus, we're thankful for your spirit that we feel in this house, Lord. We know, God, that you've come to talk to our hearts today, Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you would have our pastor this morning to speak in our hearing the word of the Lord today. Help us hear, God, what the Spirit can say to the church in this hour, Lord. We worship and magnify you and give you praise. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Bless you to be seated. Praise the when you finally make your entrance to that city of Jasper Walls and Randolph Avenue.
And I believe that he has answered that yes, prayer. Yes, he has. Praise Jesus. God. Hallelujah. Appreciate all the work that has been uh, gone into, uh, even in this last week, all the work that has uh, been done, everybody that was involved in that, everything is looking, looking so yes, good. Hallelujah. I came back the other day, I was a little bit pressed for time, I, I had to, I uh, went to the doctor, but anyway, uh, I came by and noticed uh, the Conrads and Andrew, and Andrew had a hold of one of those old weed cutters, not, not a motorized weed whacker, but one that's got a handle in it. You have to swing it, swing it. And I noticed he was down here, and I just kept driving. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. All of a sudden, I thought of something I really needed to do. <laughs> all jokes aside, we appreciate the, all the work. Yes. Everything is looking so good. Hallelujah. I've told people about this church before, and they'd say that. You mean that man will build? It's kind of like the tabernacle in the wilderness. The beauty's on the inside. That's yeah. right. Amen. Yeah. This, is, this is looking good, but more so than that, the presence of God is in this place. Amen. And uh, that's where the real beauty is actually. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, today, I have got a message. Of, I told my wife I've got enough notes to preach for just about a week. <laughs> and she said she thought that might be a little too long, so I'm willing to cut it down to only about five days. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, I want you to pretend this morning. I want to. I'm going to preach as an evangelist, okay. not as a pastor. I'm going to preach this morning as an evangelist. Uh, if you would like, you could pretend that I am some, from some far country and we've never met before. And, uh, <laughs> I've noticed that sometimes an evangelist can come and he can preach the exact same thing that the pastor preached last week. And for some reason, he gets a different reaction. Amen. I guess it has something to do with familiarity. I don't know. But anyway, uh, as an evangelist this morning, I would like for you to turn to the book of Matthew, chapter number 18. And I'm going to read just one verse of scripture, and it's from verse number 20. You know it already. As soon as you see it there in your Bible, or as soon as I start reading, you're going to know it. We can all quote it. That does not make it, and I want to focus on that this morning. Again, familiarity is said breeds contempt, and we certainly don't want to do that. We don't want to get so used to something, so used to the move of God that right. we do not appreciate the move yeah, of God. Right. So used to the Lord drawing us that we want to know we don't ever want to fail to yield ourselves to that drawing spirit of the Lord. Right. There are times when God challenges the church. Hallelujah. Yes, amen. Praise the Lord. We want to pay attention to that. Amen. But this scripture, even though it's very familiar with us, and we've quoted a lot of times, that Still, it is powerful. Hallelujah. Jesus said, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, amen. there am I in the midst of them. Yes, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just two or three, just when two or three are gathered together, and they have come together in the name of Jesus. There am I in the midst of them. Yes, amen. But it's a power of prayer meetings where there were only two or three people. Sure. And the Lord came down, the Spirit of God moved. Amen. Hallelujah. Just two or three. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to, you don't have to turn there. As a matter of fact, let me announce this title. I'm going to preach this morning simply from this. Just two or three. 
in my name. That's the title. Just two or three. Yes. In my name. Praise the Lord. Yes. Now, I'm going to read some more scripture, but uh, it's a little bit long, so the Lord bless you. You can be seated. If you have your Bible still, I'd like for you to turn there with me. It's from 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, and I'm going to begin with verse number 12. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, verse number 12. The Bible says, Seeing then that we have such hope. Hallelujah. Yes, we do. We are great. We, let me get this a little bit closer, folks. I don't have any glasses. <laughs> Seeing then that we have such hope, we are great plainness of speech. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil, untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. Yes. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Okay. Now the Lord is that spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, yes. yes. amen. Right. When two or three are gathered together in my name, yes. there am I in the midst of them. Amen. Yes. Right. We understand that He is not here in flesh like He once walked in flesh, right. but actually in a much greater presence and much yes. greater power. He is here this morning in spirit. Yes. Right. Two or three are gathered together in his name. Hallelujah. He is there in spirit. Yes. And where the spirit of the Lord is at, Hallelujah. there he is liberty. Yes. Amen. Amen. There is liberty to worship the Lord. Yes. Yes. There is liberty to pray. There is liberty to be moved on by the Spirit of God. We are not bound this morning by anything at all. Hallelujah. There is no negative thought that binds my spirit this morning that I cannot give God the glory because I stand in His presence and where the Spirit is at. In my name. Yes. Praise the Lord. That scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 talks about a veil that was over the face of Moses that took place in Exodus chapter number 34. And Moses has come down from the mountaintop from the presence of the Lord. He has spent several days there in the presence of God. And when he comes down from the mountaintop, there is a glow on his face. The Bible says in Exodus 34 that it was enough that the people were somewhat frightened of him because he had been in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I remember having an evangelist one time and also having a young man that had just recently prayed through to the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And he simply was wild in the spirit. 
The evangelist needed somebody to help him in his preaching, so he called somebody, he actually pointed out to this young, young man, and called him to the platform. And when he got on the platform, I think the evangelist understood that he had bitten off a little bit more than he could chew. <laughs> now this man has been in the presence of the Lord. He's a little bit frightened because he didn't know exactly what he was going to do. Hallelujah. There are some people that you hesitate to say praise the Lord to <laughs> if you don't want a demonstration of the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. His face shone with the glory of God. Now, Paul explains that in 2 Corinthians chapter number 3. Not just to cover his face because of the glow, but that these people could not see the end of that that was to be abolished, or they could not see the end of the age or the end of a dispensation that they were living in. They could not see it. Scripture says that their minds were blinded and that their hearts were veiled and they could not see what was coming. Praise the Lord. Right, right. And what was coming was something that was much more glorious than what they had. And the dispensation they had lived in, they could not imagine oh, yeah. what we live in yeah. and what we experience and what sometimes we take for granted. Yeah. Those people could not imagine yeah. being in the presence of God the way we are in the presence of God. As glorious as it was, yeah. 
what was to come. Right. Hallelujah, praise right. God. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 16, Paul says that that veil has been taken away. It's not there anymore. We see him differently yes. than what they ever did. Did you know the Bible even says that that generation and that dispensation cannot be made perfect without us? Oh my God, what a time we live in. What days God has brought us to. What?
to give me an example, a contemporary example, something that I have experienced myself, hallelujah, about somebody who came into the literal presence of God and knew that they were in the presence of the Lord. My wife and my kids are going to be surprised by this example because they were there. We were in revival in Burke Burnett, Texas. It was testimony night. Hallelujah. And there was an older fellow that stood to testify in this small church. And he said, you know, I repented. And it felt good, but I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Not yet. He said, I got baptized in Jesus' name, but still didn't have the Holy Ghost. Oh, he said, I've been praying about it for a long time. Every time I came to church, I was seeking the Holy Ghost. I wanted the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Every time I came, I was in the altar. Wore out the saints seeking for the Holy Ghost. They thought I'd never get it. He said, I was pretty well convinced myself. But, oh, I wanted this so bad. He said, I was praying in my home one day. I was praying. Talking to the Lord about the baptism of the Holy Ghost because I wanted so much. He said, the Lord spoke to me. He said, the Lord said, this is what I want you to do. Here's where it gets a little humorous. I want you to fast for three days. Don't eat anything, just drink some water. Three days. <clears throat> then I want you to go down to the local grocery store and get you a can of Campbell's chicken noodle soup. <laughs> I want you to take that home and heat it up. Eat it right before church time. You go to church that night. I'll give you the Holy Ghost. Oh, Jesus. He said, I fasted three days. I went down to the store and got me some Campbell's chicken noodle soup. <laughs> I warmed it up, ate it right before church time. <laughs> I went to church that time. God filled me with the Holy Ghost. He said, you know what, church? If it had been high in soup, it wouldn't have worked. And I want to tell you something. We had chuckled about that for years. I thought it was one of the funniest testimonies I ever heard. And I realized that that soup actually didn't really have anything to do with it, or maybe it did. Because when I prayed about this this morning, this was the first thing that came to my mind. And I thought, when I get to that place in my preaching, I don't want anything comical. But it pressed on me. Even to the place that I began to feel bad that I had ever laughed about that situation. And sorry I could laugh about some things. Sure. Because God reminded me of something this morning. That it really wasn't the soup. And it didn't really matter whether it's hinds or camels. But what mattered to that man is when he came into that service that night, he was totally 100% convinced yes. that he had just stepped into yes. the presence of the Lord. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in his presence, there is liberty. Yes. In his presence, absolutely, anything can happen. Yes. And if I can just convince two or three of us this morning that we are in the literal yes. presence of God, Amen. there's no telling. What's going to happen in this place in the next few minutes? It will take our prayer to the next level if we understand that we are in the literal presence of God. Our worship will go into a new dimension. We will realize, hallelujah, just as surely as those people 
ate of those loaves and fishes and were in the presence and heard the voice of God, we are in his presence of every bit as much in my If I could just fix, just just two and three in my name. If I could just do that, just two and three could get hold of this. Our faith will skyrocket. Praise the Lord. That we are in the literal presence of God. There's not a veil anymore. No, sir. It's time for plain speaking. Praise God. Hallelujah. Something has been revealed to us. Or we know something that generations before us didn't know. We have revelations. Hallelujah. That they never had. They could not see what was coming. But we partake of it all the time. Praise God. And he is in this place. He is in this place. If I could just convince two or three of us, uh, hallelujah. Yes, amen. We are here, just two or three yes. in my name. If we can come to that the place, there's no telling what's going to happen. The Lord turns there are things, there are things. Hallelujah. In Scripture that attracted the presence of the Lord, one of those things is worship. It always got his attention. Yes, amen. It always attracted the attention of God. Until that 
desperation gets hold of us. And we're going to stay at the same level we are. But if we want to go deeper in our sleep, just do the three of us can believe we're in His presence. Hallelujah. Without music, let's worship Him. Just 
two or three of my name. Hallelujah. I want you to take hands with somebody. Let's, let's, let's kind of get to some groups right here and pray and do that. God, if, 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 if you're kind of lost in the spirit here and you're kind of interceding and you don't want that to be hindered, you go right on and do what you're doing. Thank you. 
here this morning. And we are seeing each other. We can behold each other in the natural. But what is movement among us is the Spirit of God that we cannot see. But there is something that has God has placed in our hearts that we can detect and feel the move of the Spirit of the Lord. And we know God is moving in this place. Hallelujah. Just two or three in my name. And there is promise. There is a promise by God that Scripture declares cannot lie. There. Pray for revival in this church right now. Praise the Lord. 